Hi there, welcome to Table Talk. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this series, I take a gaming-related topic, share my initial thoughts on it, and then invite your responses through the comments which I compile into the following episode called Table Talk Back. And in this way, we can all participate in the conversation. Now here I want to talk about a word that's often used and maybe even misused in our hobby, the word hype. And I'm curious about your thoughts on this. So let's start with a standard definition of the term, which from looking online in various online dictionaries, I saw it as to promote or publicize a product or idea intensively, often exaggerating its importance or benefits, to create interest in by flamboyant or dramatic methods, to intensify by ingenious or questionable claims, even to trick. You can see there's a lot of negative connotation built right into the definition of the word. I would say that hype implies there's a certain level of shallowness in the content of the discussion or the presentation of information, that it's somewhat disingenuous, even attempting to make people think that something is what it isn't. And while I understand, of course, that in our hobby, we certainly see a lot of marketing and advertising of games, I wouldn't say that I feel that the term hype is used in proportion to what's actually going on. Now, one of the best examples I can think of where I feel like I see the term hype or overhyped being applied the most often is with this title, Scythe. This was a game that when it was first announced came out with just a post on the internet with I believe, if it wasn't this image, one similar to it, the title, a brief definition of the mechanics and the theme and setting. People went bananas. I know I did because I like Stonemaier games and I thought this artwork was striking. The idea of a game set in this world was interesting to me and the brief explanation of the mechanics also appealed. So yes, I was on board, but I think this is where the confusion enters the discussion. Because is what Jamie Stegmeier did, does it fall under this definition of promoting or publicizing a product or idea intensively, often exaggerating its importance or benefits, promoting or publicizing showily through ingenious or questionable claims? Again, is the definition of hype, is that what happened here? Or did he show an actual piece of artwork from the game and then talk about how it's still in development, it's something coming to Kickstarter later in the future, keep an eye out for it, this is something we're doing. Okay, did he hype the game, or did all of us, get, sorry Jamie, get really excited about what this could be? Did we start imagining how incredible and amazing this game could be, and then whip ourselves up into our own frenzy just by talking about it? And I think another thing to keep in mind is we talk about us as a gaming community talking about it. It was a very small subset of us. The majority of people who are in this hobby, the millions of people who visit Board Game Geek every month, very few of them were involved in this discussion and probably even saw that initial image to begin with. Then, finally, he launched his game on Kickstarter, the game that I, I dropped. <clears throat> this one. And during that campaign, he released the rules PDF. He also released a print and play copy, so you can actually play the game in advance yourself before you backed it. And the majority of the Kickstarter page was just taken up primarily showing the different components and brief explanations of how they're supposed to work in the game. There was also three preview videos and a how to play video, not done by me, mine came later. And at the top of the Kickstarter page, there were five statements, five positive, here's what I think this game does well statements that he supposedly summarized from the 750 different play tests that were done for this game. I believe there's actually more than 750 play tests, but he summarized the feedback he received as, here are five things people are saying that this game does well. Aside from that, I wouldn't say that the Kickstarter page was overly sales pitchy. There wasn't any, hey, when you buy this game, you're going to be throwing out all your other games because this one is the best. It's amazing. You really need to buy this game. But you know what? <laughs> people did buy the game. People went bananas again. So did I. Over 17,000 people backed the initial Kickstarter for Scythe. And I was excited about it. And I think this is where the issue creeps into the discussion. People, I think, are prone to confusing what is genuine internal personal excitement and anticipation with some kind of external manipulative force that they perceive is, is trying to compel them to, to buy things that aren't good for them that they would prefer not to have. We all know the example of the used car salesman who is overselling, overpitching a clunker that doesn't work, trying to trick you into buying something. 
I don't feel like that's what we saw in situations like in Scythe, where the word hype seems to be applied liberally to what was going on. I would even argue that Jamie Stegmaier was within you know, his rights to say a few things that are positive about the game that he's trying to sell to people. But even in that, I saw restraint. I didn't see a carnival barker. I didn't see someone trying to hide things. Hey, here's the rules. Here's a print and play. Not, here is the miracle cure to all your gaming needs. And even in the videos that were previewed on the page, I saw a lot of restraint. Most of them were what we've come to expect. A majority of time spent explaining how the game works, and then a smaller opinion piece at the end. And Bowers Corner, who's been doing reviews for a long time, he actually started his review of Scythe on the Kickstarter page by explaining reasons why you might not want to buy this game. Why this game might not actually be a good fit for some people, some aspects that might not be as attractive. Think about that. On the Kickstarter page itself was a prominent video detailing reasons why, hey, you might not want to buy this game. Kudos to Bowers Corner for including that in his review, but also kudos to Jamie Stegmeier for posting that review right on his Kickstarter page. But here's the thing. Even if every video on there was ravingly positive, even if every video ever created about the game was ravingly positive, that's okay. Reviewers are allowed to like things. <laughs> Reviewers are allowed to confound us with how much they like things that we don't like. Everyone is going to have their own opinions about the experiences that they have at a gaming table. And you and I could be seated at the same table playing the exact same game and walk away with totally disparate points of view on what just happened. I'm not a fan of looking at somebody else's positive impressions and feelings about a game and then just dismissing it as them succumbing to hype. I don't think there's anything inherently more shallow about being positive than there is about being negative. That doesn't prove anything about the quality of that opinion. And I think this is where my, my personal hang-up really comes into play because oftentimes when I see the term hype or a game being overhyped being used, I feel it's a shorthand for saying, hey everybody, I wasn't duped. I know precisely how bad this game is. While everyone else is talking about their supposed positive experiences with the game, I know the real truth about precisely how this game should be viewed. And I actually think there's something kind of astounding about holding this position. Because if a game is generally well received, and let's again take Scythe as an example, this game has over 36,000 individual ratings on Board Game Geek, and the average of those ratings is 8.5 out of 10. So I think we can comfortably say this game is generally well liked by the people who play it. And if we assume that that's true, and someone comes along and says, no, 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 this game was overhyped, it did not live up to the hype, then it sort of suggests to me that that person is out of touch with the rest of the gaming community. They're not wrong that they didn't like it. That's a perfectly valid reaction to have to any gaming experience. I didn't like this. But to then say, in broad sweeping generalizations, that means that this game was overhyped, it kind of suggests to me that that person is overvaluing their personal opinion and overstating its value. Which is actually what hyping is all about. Which is kind of ironic if you think about it. And even positive uses of the term hype have the same kind of problems. If, if someone came along and said, here's a game that's been riding the hype train, and this time, it's justified. Well, it sounds like a positive endorsement, but not really, because what it's implying is that the hundreds or thousands of people who really like this game, th their points of view are now valid because this individual also enjoyed the game, which implies that if they hadn't enjoyed the game, then all of those other people were merely caught up in some kind of fabricated hype train. It just doesn't seem like a logical position from which to state a point of view. So what do you think? Is the term hype something that's often mislabeled or misassigned to situations that occur in our hobby? Or do you think it doesn't get assigned enough? Do you think that maybe there is a real hype problem in our hobby, not just within ourselves, but in some kind of external sense? I'd be curious to know what you think about things that I said here or maybe other thoughts that you want to bring to the table. If you have them, please leave them in the comments below, and in the next episode, I'll compile those and add some more of my own thoughts, and we'll really dig into this discussion. And if you enjoyed this video and thinking about these ideas, consider hitting like and subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notifications when the next episode goes online. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.